we'll continue our discussion on uh, corporate social responsibility. And we have um, dealt into what corporate social responsibility is. And I'm sure as by now, you understand the whole concept of corporate social responsibility. But who is responsible in uh, making sure that the corporate um, um, company is uh, uh, socially responsible? And basically, it's for us to focus on the governance nature of these corporate organizations. So governance basically refers to the way in which a business makes its decision and how it makes its affairs, how businesses are run, who is in charge, who takes the necessary de um, decisions. And when we talk of corporate governance, it's basically the system in which companies are managed and controlled. The system in which man uh, companies are managed and controlled. Here, it says that it refers to the relationship between those who govern and those who are governed. So that is a corporate governance. So corporate governance here, it refers is a system by which companies by which companies are managed and controlled. How companies are being managed and controlled, they will, and it goes on to also focuses on the relationship between those who govern and those who govern. What we should know about a company is that we have um, different uh, levels of uh, leadership. So we have what you call the board of directors. And the board of directors basically here is an assembled group of people to lead and control the company. So it functions and it interests in the functions and interests of the shareholders. So in terms of the corporate, under the corporate social responsibility, we have the board of um, directors who are basically um, assembled to lead and control the company so that it functions in the interest of all stakeholders, in the interest of all stakeholders. Now, this board of directors, their rights and responsibilities are conferred on them. It is stated in the company's uh, um, and manual so they know and stand and know how to go about and discharge their duties they discharge their duty so and um, under this um, board of directors and a director um, do, um sorry a director basically must have the trust of its people must have its trust of the people and to enable a board to discharge its duties and responsibility um all to enable a board to discharge its duties and responsibility as well as fulfill a decision making process effectively it may delegate some of its function to board committees so under the board of um, directors we have the board committees which basically the directors can discharge or release some of their duties to them to ensure that their duties are being done or performed. Another importance too about this board is that it can be composed of two main groups. We have the executive board and the non-executive board. So the executive directors here under the corporate governance. So all what we are discussing is that under corporate governance, as they try to manage and control, this is being done by a board and this board has established to seek the interest of shareholders. So under this board, we are under this board, we have two groups. We have the executive and, and, and non-executive directors. So executive directors basically are members of the management team who are appointed to the board. Basically, these executive directors, they are part of the company who are being appointed to be part of this board. And then non-executive directors basically. Um, are not um, part, they don't have um, um, an executive role, they don't um, undertake the day-to-day -day, uh, um, operations in the business. So this um, executives basically, they are working people in the company, they undertake the day-to-day -day activity of the company and they are being appointed to serve on the board. The non-executive board are basically not appointed to serve on the board. Um, uh, the non-executive rule are they are not they are appointed to serve on the board, but they are not part of the day-to-day -day, um, um, operations of the business. Sorry for that. Yes. So basically, under what I've discussed um, 
uh, so far, this is the, some of the concepts in terms of the responsibility nature of the board and how it is being run, the executives and um, the non-executive rules here. Yeah, so I've discussed them. I have discussed this section. So the board has responsibility and their primary responsibility is what I have, um, we have, we have in this chart. So what are the primary rules of the governing boards? Let's take them, um, the steers and set strategic direction with regards to both the organization strategy, the way in which the governance areas are to be approached, addressed and conducted. This is simply straightforward. They also approve policies and planning and give effect to the strategy to set the direction. So what is saying is that this um, corporate board are those responsible for policies that tends to and give directions as to how they should go about or run their businesses. They also ensure accountability for organizations, performance by means of, amongst others, reporting and disclosure. So in terms of accountability, that is what the board is about. Did the company perform well? How is the company faring? What should be done to uh, 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 make sure that um, uh, the trajectory um, uh, um, as the company making losses, what accounted for the losses, what audit should be done? So these are the accountability nature of this board. They also oversee and monitors implementation and execution by management. So after the board, we have what we call the, the setup under the board of directors, we have um, other um, and managerial appointees and what they tend to do is that they tend to oversee and monitor the execution by management or by uh, the directors in which their board have appointed them or have given their some responsibilities to to help so the primary principles of good governance so in terms of the principles of a good governance is that these are the um, a major uh, uh, variables or major issues that makes um, um, or try to show a good governance. You can talk about issue of discipline, transparency, independence, accountability, responsibility, fairness, and social responsibility. Fairness and social responsibility. So we continue our discussion with co um, corporate governance compliance. Now, corporate governance compliance, which is also under the corporate governance, is that in terms of the issues of um, laws and other responsibility, should individual be regulated by law or should individual take on certain practices and responsibilities by as a means of its own uh, code or combinations of the two? So in the United States, for example, the House of Commons passed this law which is where um, comply or else, so that those who do not comply to certain um, compliance um, are made to face the law. And in others to either you complain, or you comply or explain, if you look at the Commonwealth um, com and countries, basically under them, they use their comply and explain, where basically people tend to undertake, um, um, have the opt, have opt for the code of principles or the practices. So once they, instead of rather being forced or being asked to either you, unless you comply or else you face the loss or you um, undertake certain compliance activity by means of code and ethics, by means of code and practice. Now, one issue uh, in terms of the criteria of a good governance code and guidelines are used to determine appropriate standard for conduct. They are used to standard and determine appropriate standard for conduct. And interestingly, voluntary governance schools are very, very important. So if you rather you voluntary as a company, voluntary comply to certain uh, guidelines and principles are very important for the company's well-being because it helps to stop um, dishonesty or to legitimate morals in companies. So it has to stop this honesty because people believe that you voluntarily comply to certain laws and certain um, adherence and not 
necessarily need to invoke so that with that situation, even if your company may falter once, you know, do, do, do something wrong. I mean, they try to look at the good wills and the good principles of this company and the morality standards of this company. And however, this kind of uh, um, conduct that is, is basically difficult to measure because when you talk of morality, it's basically a certain of mindsets and it's, mindset is basically embodied in the issues of leadership. In the border issues of leadership. So, in terms of a good governance practice or compliance, um, is very important. And um, if you read the um, Keynes book, um, Keynes Committee Report on Corporate Governance, he listed seventeen uh, um, principles that a company must we can base on to assess a company in terms of a good governance and compliance activity. So um, to sum it all under compliance, um, there are three ways in the social, um, there are three ways in which social, corporate social responsibility committee can determine corporate policy. And we can talk about the value-based system, we can talk about the stakeholder engagement, and we can talk about a combination of both. So in our discussion of um, corporate social responsibility, and we are talking about corporate governance, are these two basically linked? Yes, they are linked because for a company to ensure corporate social responsibility, it should be in the hands of this corporate governance or management. So the people who are in charge of managing the affairs of the company, are they basically concerned with issues of corporate social responsibility? And this is what the link is. So for this to incorporate a policy of social responsibility, that is where we are limiting our discussion to three main concepts, either the value base, the stakeholder in, um, engagement process, or the combination of both. So under the value based system, here we are saying that the corporate um, the corporate social responsibility policy is in line with the company's own vision, mission, values, and guiding principles in which guiding principles is used when a company addresses corporate social responsibility in a productive manner. So here, the management or the, the people in charge of the company in terms of their own vision, mission statements, like what their company is made about, they tend to prioritize corporate social responsibility, that they, they are there to ensure that they are, their customer base or their community in which base are healthy and safe. And so it is embedded in their uh, uh, um, vision, mission statements. And another, I mean, link to this too, in terms of the corporate governance and corporate social responsibility is that we can also talk about the stakeholder engagement process. Now, when we talk about the stakeholder engagement process, here it allows stakeholders to determine what they want from the company and what they consider to be the issues and culture of the company. It's a reactive approach. This is a reactive approach. So here with the stakeholder engagement process, the stakeholder determines what they want from the company and what they consider to be issues. So they are able, such engagement process is able to ensure that, oh, they expect the company to do this for them. And this, the company also gets to understand certain or consider certain issues and the culture of the company. So this is an reactive approach. Or the last one is that, um, in terms of this link is that a company can also combine this value-based system and the stakeholder engagement process. You can combine these two. So we continue our discussion and now we are focusing on sustainability, sustainable development. One thing that we should know is that corporate social responsibility, one of its purpose is to ensure sustainable development. And in ensuring sustainable development, what is therefore the, um, the meaning of sustainable development? When a company tends to produce or be in business, it engages resources of the society. However, to ensure that there is sustainable development, as we develop or transform these resources into needs for to satisfy the community, it should not jeopardize or affect our future 
generations. So when you talk about the scale of um, sustainable development is that development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their also needs. So you do not um, uh, uh, tend to say the fact that because you have um, gold today, you tend to undermine or use the gold in such a way that future generations will not be able to benefit or they will suffer because whatever we do today will come back to us tomorrow. So as a business entity, these two things that we are talking about is that in terms of the definition is in the issues of needs and the issues of limitation. These are two major things that once we satisfy the needs of our present generation, the limitations to the future generations we should be concerned with. However, in terms of today, people we really thought we would not survive because of the decisions that were made for us in the past. However, technology has made sure that we can use technology just to, I mean, affect these limitations. But the concept of sustainable development is that we should be able to work, um, to undertake businesses in such a way that as businesses strive today, it does not operate in a manner that compromises future generations. And that is the important and then about sustainable development. And under the core heart of sustainable development, in terms of the it highlights issues of environment, the economic and social progress and equity. One interesting thing about underlying all this is the limit on the world natural resources, because basically most of the world natural resources are what ensures are what are needed or support businesses, because businesses are, are, are made by and, and transforming these resources into goods or semi-finished goods. So whilst you undertake this, and today we have a whole lot of world engagement in terms of the sustainable development. We have sustainable development reports, the millennial development goals. All these things are there to ensure that businesses are sustainable. So we now move on to talk about stakeholders engagement. Stakeholder engagement, stakeholder engagement. One thing we should know is that as a business, business needs to thrive and for business to be responsible is for them to understand the people that are needed or the people involved or are part for business to sustain. So in terms of stakeholder, we are looking out for all the other people that are needed for or responsible for the business. It's not just about the company itself, but the community, the society, the individuals, all the people that comes together to ensure businesses survive. So in our earlier, we talked about um, the stakeholder engagement process. So why would um, the um, social responsible company, why would they want to engage in stakeholder engagement? They will do this to ensure that companies, responsible companies went to undertake and respond to societal expectations of what it means to be, for example, a responsible manufacturer, marketer, and employer. Another reason for this engagement is means to help and build better relationship while you, you engage in um, and stakeholders, you engage companies, engage stakeholders to um, build better relationship with all parties. They build better relationship with all parties. They understand and respond to society's expectation. And they lastly help to provide opportunities to align businesses practice and societal needs. So they align and, and they build, um, provide better opportunities and online with businesses. So as I've explained, stakeholders basically are the um, group of persons basically who are affected um, by the, um, a business activity. So they are these are the group of people who are affected by the business activity. It can take, it can be in any form, either the individual collective or any group of people who are affected by business activity. These are what we call the stakeholders. And we can talk about two, aspect of stakeholders that is the primary that is the primary stakeholders and the secondary stakeholders so the primary stakeholders are 
stakeholders whose ongoing support for the company is vital for its survival, whose ongoing um, support are vital for its survival. Then the secondary stakeholders are stakeholders who has less direct impact on the company. So these are uh, stakeholders who have less direct impact on company. One interesting thing about this is that um, somebody or when talk of the primary stakeholders, we talk about uh, maybe the, the people who are directly affected. And for the second bit, they are less directly affected. So that those who are primarily affected, you can talk about the sh shareholders, the employees, those who are not directly affected, uh, maybe environmental NGOs or the media. However, it doesn't mean that it, this is constant because if you are a secondary stakeholder, uh, shareholder, in a particular point in time, you tend to become, um, you can move from being a secondary um, uh, um, shareholder to a primary shareholder when maybe there's um, issues that you have to therefore give consent to before a company can move on, which means that you are primary or directly, your decisions is affecting the company directly. And that moves you from a secondary shareholder to um, um, a primary shareholder. So we still continue with our discussion on stakeholder engagement. Now, even for us to understand this concept better, what is engagement? So if somebody tells you that he's engaged to you, which means that the person intends to marry you, the person has, I mean, used a diamond ring or gives you a gold ring to, I mean, with the aim of marrying you. So, however, when text comes to um, this business engagement or corporation engagement, they should involve issues of um, an ongoing and multifaceted um, process between a corporation and its stakeholders. And with this ongoing process, that between um, corporations and stakeholders should include providing information, capacity building, listening and responding to community and stakeholders concern, include communities and stakeholders in decision-making process, developing goodwill and better understanding of objectives and priorities, establishing realistic understanding of the potential outcome. So this ongoing process, this interaction between the corporation and the stakeholders is what we term as the um, um, engagement, the engagement process or the engagement pattern. So you must provide information, you must build capacity, capacity building to equip community and stakeholders of effectively engaging. So it's not just about you providing information, but you must make sure that you give them the understanding, like you give them a training where they will be able to appreciate how they should be able to engage with your company so that your company can thrive. So if you are, I mean, a business whose idea is to give services to some um, company, or to give and um, uh, buy some um, machines to certain farmers. It's not just about you providing them the um, machines, but you also have to engage them and train them in the use of the machines so that they can be more effective in terms of their engagement with the company. That is what we are telling as the capacity building, the ways of making sure you build them up. Then you also must listen and respond to community and the issues concerned. What are their issues concerning the people you are engaging with? How are they doing? You listen to them, you listen more, and you respond accordingly. Include community and stakeholders in decision-making process. This is very, very important. For policies to thrive in a company, you should be able to include um, um, communities and stakeholders because any decision by the business is going to affect all the people involved and develop a good will and better understanding of the objective and establishing a realistic understanding of the potential. Uh, how do we engage? How do we engage? And in terms of how you engage, your level of engagement is determined by this following variable. So the goal established, goals established through interaction with stakeholders. So as you interact with stakeholders, you establish certain goals, and this is a form of engagement. Your mode of communication with the stakeholders, how did you communicate with them? How did you engage with them? Was it through media? Was it through face-to-face -face interaction or through a training program or a seminar? So all the mode of communication is also important. 
in terms of your engagement with um, stakeholders, the nature of the relationship between the company and the stakeholders. You should always make sure that you have this good relationship and engagement approach with the um, engagement approach used with the stakeholders. So we have a lot of engagement approach and we are soon going to talk about it. So it is always important to engage with your, your stakeholders and in engaging in stakeholders, um, even Kumba and uh, this Kumba, it listed certain principles why this engagement tends to, uh, um, that are very important, why they are important to engage. Because um, with this philosophy, in terms of stakeholders engagement, it's informed by corporate values. It's informed by corporate values, according to Kimbu. Um, for this um, corporate um, engagement is informed by the corporate its own values. And what are some of these values? The values is that it's concerned about the health and status, the health and safety, care and respect, integrity, accountability, collaboration, and innovation. Through engagement, you realize that it's not just about you taking into consideration the health and safety, like you care and you respect, the company's integrity with the people, making an accountability to the people you work with or having certain collaboration, but also form of innovation. Sometimes you learn new ideas from the people through stakeholders and through stakeholder engagement process. Now, we are going to look at key approaches of stakeholder engagement. And these are five key approaches throughout stakeholder engagement that we shouldn't, as a company, we should always try, to, when you are engaging people, we should always try to look out for, is that we should be able to involve the people. So involvement, so involvement basically here, we should be able to welcome all parties, like everybody involvement. You involve everybody who is an interesting party in the um, business. Another um, 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 feature is the candor. Candor. Here we are saying that you should be your in terms of your approach or in terms of interaction. It should be broad. It should be comprehensive. We should make sure that you con you consider every issue. Don't just limit yourself to certain particular issue that you feel that is what you need to. But once you're engaging with all stakeholders, you make sure that you have to be comprehensive because that is where it builds trust because they know that every issue or every concern that is being raised, you are basically going to take um, um, a candid view to that. You also must think about uh, the issue of some relevance. Relevance, that issues that are being focused on should have greater importance the issues that are being focused on should have greater importance. We can also talk about learning. That is what I said, you uncover new ideas, new perspective, and you seek mutual understanding and find better solutions to the problems and actions. Another I am key feature about engaging stakeholders is action, that you become results oriented and not just uh, listening to people, but you improve businesses and their decision-making by applying the things that are being discussed. Okay, so we, con we are about concluding our discussion for today. And here we discuss about the steps in stakeholder engagement process. So the steps in stakeholders engagement process, basically one is that you prepare, that is you identify and understand the issues, or the issues or things to explore with the stakeholders. You also plan that is a set objectives. What are the objectives? Objectives A, B, and C. That you must also include other issues, other objectives, or because there are other things that may not be in the plan, but may be important to the business. You also include a design, developing the engagement plan. You must develop the engagement plan. They must also engage. So after you design, you engage, and that is you try to meet these objectives. The objectives that are being said, you try to meet them. And once you meet these objectives, you evaluate to see, to assess whether the objective actually you met those objective outcomes that you apply. And here in applying is that you share information, you share information as to the outcome. That is what you is the, um, the goal you set, you achieved, and you assess it. And now this is the outcome that you share with the people. To share those information with the people. On that note, in terms of today's discussion, which is on corporate social responsibility, 
we've talked about corporate social responsibility and how it is being used inter um, interchangeably with corporate social response and investment, which we said is an, just a section under the corporate social responsibility and corporate citizenship. With that one, it considers the rights and the responsibility nature of a business, while the corporate social responsibility only focuses on the responsible nature. We also talk about the historical overview of social government market and the ethical drivers in terms of the contemporary issues that are basically we need to focus our uh, corporate social responsibility on, the importance of corporate social responsibility policies and framework. We therefore move to talk about um, the sustainable development and we concluded with um, the principles and the process of stakeholder engagement. On that note, we'll gather back in our lecture and if you have any question, you can bring it. Thank you.